So Sony uses pulses of, pulses of ultrasound, which as we know, are sound waves with a frequency too high to be heard in order to minimize the outside interference. Most of the outside sounds that might interfere with sonar tend to be in a different frequency. The computer can measure the delay between the ultrasound pulse it emits and the echo of that pulse. And by looking at the delay between the initial pulse and the echo, it can figure out how far that sound wave must have traveled and therefore how far away any obstacles are. We'll be looking at a question to figure out exactly how to calculate depth, but that's a little later on. So it turns out that some animals, like dolphins or bats, will use sonar or echolocation as a means of looking at their environment. Bats, for example, spend most of their waking hours in the dark, so they can't rely on their eyes to bring them good information. Instead, they'll send out ultrasound pulses and listen to the reflections. They can use this to find their way, even in total darkness. Dolphins do a similar thing, but of course, they do it underwater. And the reason that it's dark is not because they're only active at night, it's because very little light gets down to very deep water. Now we can also use it on a smaller scale. We can also use, that is, ultrasound and ultrasound pulses. So ultrasound imaging is one example of using ultrasound pulses on a much smaller scale than sonar to provide useful information. So ultrasound imaging is a technique that's used to try to image the inside of a human being, or in this case, a cat. What we do is we send ultrasound pulses into the tissue or the flesh of a patient or a cat. Now the sound waves, as they pass through the different media inside a body, will create reflections. And we can pick up those reflections as echoes. So it's a little bit like sonar, but on a smaller scale. Instead of measuring the depth of water, we're simply measuring the depth of different parts inside a body. And this means that we can build up an image of what's inside it. And of course, reflections occur at all changes in medium. When an ultrasound pulse is sent through the skin, part of it will bounce off the skin and part of it will be transmitted. Part of it will bounce off, say, the blood vessels underneath and part of it will be transmitted. Finally, some will bounce off the bone underneath that and some will be transmitted, of course. And so because of this, we're able to build up an image of the layers that are underneath the skin of the body. And the other nice thing about ultrasound is that we can send out pulses more than 200 times per second. Remember that ultrasound has a frequency of about any number above 20,000 hertz. So if we can send a sound wave out at 20,000 hertz, then we can analyze it very quickly with computers. And that means that we can send out another pulse and analyze that one very quickly as well. And if we do this 200 pulses per second, then we can see how the object that we're imaging will change. Using ultrasound at many pulses per second, we can create real-time images of things that are moving inside a body. For example, we can use ultrasound to look at a beating heart and see exactly how it's beating. And of course, we can also use it to look at unborn embryos or fetuses. We can see a picture of an unborn child over here. And it turns out that in some aspects, ultrasound is much better at, for example, x-rays at looking at uh, parts of the body. The problem with x-rays is that although they're very quick and they produce a very high resolution image, they're only really good at measuring the hard parts of the body, that is the bones. It's very difficult to get information on, for example, a beating heart with a single high resolution x-ray photograph because most of the x-rays will pass, pass straight through. The other problem is that because x-rays have such high energy compared to ultrasound, they can be unsafe if we use them too much which means that we can't fire 200 X-ray pulses at someone every second. We can't use them to image very sensitive organs or fetuses. So in these cases, ultrasound tends to be a much better idea. What advantages does ultrasound imaging have over X-ray imaging? We know that X-ray produces lovely high resolution picture of things like broken bones. Well, the answer is because although x-rays are very good at imaging still bones, they're not very good at imaging moving parts of the body or soft parts of the body. So ultrasound can be used to image the soft tissue in the body, 
but x-rays are only good at imaging hard objects, although they are quite good at measuring hard objects. Uh, as well as this, ultrasound is safer than x-rays. A pulse of ultrasound has a much lower energy than a pulse of x-rays. So we can use ultrasound hundreds of times a second and use this to produce a real-time image of an object inside the body.